everyone, today I'm gonna to do the Count With Me book tag video. So I was tagged by Chaz over at the Bookish Chaz. I'm gonna link his video and his channel below. If you don't already subscribe to Chaz, he's a really great guy, he's really well read, and I enjoyed his video doing this tag. So if you like this, go check out his channel as well. So the prompts are interesting. It's just numbered one through 10 and it gives you just different kind of prompts for the, each number. And what I tried to do for my selections, I tried to pick books that I haven't talked about very much on the channel that I enjoy, or even some books that maybe I just enjoy and haven't talked about them recently. Okay, so the first prompt is, of course, number one, and this is the first book in a series. So I picked up, this is Pawn of Prophecy by David Eddings, and this is the first book of the Belgariad. And this is my favorite book series from when I was young. I love David Eddings and the Belgariad. Now listen, a lot of times modern readers go into this and they're confronted with a book that has every trope in the book, literally, and is also kind of predictable, kind of formulaic, and they don't like it. I still love this book. I've read the Belgariad three times. This is the Grim Oak Press version that I picked up. I, I love these books, they're fantastic. So my number one pick is Pawn of Prophecy. So number two is two or more copies of the same book. This was tough because I don't really do that. I do have Lord of the Rings in both um, separate books and an omnibus, but I didn't want to do that one. But I do have two copies of The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. There's a specific reason. First of all, I have the hardcover because I have all of the hardcovers, which you see up there. This, of course, is the Juniper Press dust jackets for the hardcovers. But I also have a paperback of The Eye of the World. And the reason that I kept this paperback, this is where I actually read it the first time. There's a short story in here called Ravens, which is a prequel to The Eye of the World. And it features a lot of the characters from Edmonds Field when they're like nine years old. And it's not in the hardcover version. So the reason I've kept this one is so that I do have that short story, that short story Ravens. All right, number three, three colors on cover. I don't know if it meant three or more colors, so I picked one that kind of only has three colors, and that is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I love this edition. I don't know what edition this is, but I love this edition I picked up. I've read this one a couple times. It is one of the most moving dystopian novels I've ever read, and it's got a great cover too. All right, number four. A book with four or more perspectives. Well, of course, anytime I have a chance to talk about Robin Hobb, I never did a Live Ship Traders review, so I can point up the first book of the Live Ship Traders trilogy, Ship of Magic. As you likely know, Robin Hobb has become my favorite fantasy author, if not my favorite fantasy, favorite author, period. Ship of Magic is the first of the Live Ship Traders trilogy. And it is brilliant. You could actually, if you wanted to start your Robin Hobb journey with this book, you could. The five series in the Realm of the Elderlings, one, three, and five kind of connect, and two and four kind of connect. So you can kind of start with one or two. And this is the second series in the Realm of the Elderlings. And this is just brilliant. Some brilliant characters. Again, the prompt was point of view, and that's why I immediately thought, well, I got to talk about Hobb or Abercrombie. And since I just did an Abercrombie video, I had to talk about Hobb. But Ship of Magic has several point of view characters that you'll connect with. Some you'll like, some you won't, but it's one of those just riveting stories told by one of the best the genre's ever seen. Okay, number five, a five-star read. So I picked an author I haven't talked about since I've been on BookTube, and that's John Irving. My, my favorite of John Irving's is A Prayer for Owen Meany, just because I find that character so memorable. I don't know if this is his best book, but this is the one I remember the most. The three books that everybody knows of Irving's, which are the classics, is The Prayer for Owen Meany, Cider House Rules, and The World According to Garp. All three of those are five-star reads, but I never talked about Owen Meany on the channel. I guess if I do my top 10 literary characters, he may make the cut. So maybe I'll talk about him when I start my top 10 lists next year. Okay, number six. Six or more short stories. So I haven't uh, read any Russian this year, so I wanted to talk about some Russian. This is a collection of works by Alexander Pushkin, some novellas, some short stories. There's, I don't know, nine or ten in this collection. 
Uh, Queen of Spades is the most popular one in here, and it's it's freaking brilliant. This, of course, is my favorite translators, uh, Larissa Volohansky and Richard Pavir. They are fantastic. They make the Russian literature just leap off the page, and it's so much more readable. If you haven't read Russian literature, I think getting a collection like this one is a good place to start because I find that if you jump into a big novel like a Dostoevsky or something like that, it can be challenging to keep track of characters because of the different ways characters can be called by different characters, other characters. So you could pick up some Pushkin and hopefully enjoy it as much as I have. All right, number seven. The number seven on a cover or spine. This was a tough one. And then I remember these books. I've not read these since ninth grade. I don't know if they're any good. I will reread them probably not anytime soon, but it does have a seven on the spine. And this is volume seven of L. Ron Hubbard's Mission Earth books. There are 10 of these. And this one's called Voyage of Vengeance. I had to look because it's been so long since I read these. Again, I don't remember L. Ron Hubbard very well. I remember aspects of Battlefield Earth. So if you've read L. Ron Hubbard recently, let me know. I just wonder if his reception is not a positive one because he was just not a great author, or if maybe it's tainted because of his connections with founding Scientology and things like that. So I'm curious. I will reread these. I have these 10 and Battlefield Earth on the shelf that I'll pick up at some point. Probably not anytime soon, but at some point I will read those books. All right, number eight, a book with eight letters in the title. I picked up this book by Don Winslow called The Force. So that's eight letters. Don Winslow, I used to read a lot of crime fiction, and there's really only a few authors that I continue to read crime fiction, and Don Winslow is one of them. The Force is basically about a dirty cop. And it's so well written. I, I kept thinking about the show The Shield as I was reading this one. Uh, that's one of my favorite television shows of all time. And The Force is a really good one by Don Winslow. Another one that I've read that I enjoyed is called The Cartel. But he's really good at crime fiction. Very well plotted. Just great stories. All right, number nine. This was the hardest one. Number nine is find a book that ends on a page with a nine. <laughs> so I was just pulling stuff off the shelf and looking, but I finally found, I've talked about this recently, Pines by Blake Crouch has 309 pages. This is the first book in the Wayward Pines trilogy, and it's brilliant. This The ending of this book's fantastic. It goes a direction that I don't know if anyone could ever predict. These are great. If you haven't read Blake Crouch, most people say start with Dark Matter, but I think you can start with Pines and equally love it. I love his sense of atmosphere as an author, especially in this book. It's just, it's palpable. It's it's so good. All right, number 10, our final prompt is a 10 books in a series. Well, I talked about Mission Earth. I think that's the only 10 book series I've read, but I have one that I'm starting in January. Of course, that is the Malazan Book of the Fallen. This is book one, Gardens of the Moon. You probably saw the video that I collaborated with Alex at Tall Guy Reads. We are reading this together with Jordan from Jordan Reads and Ian the Reader. And really looking forward to the discussions around this book. If I get around to it, I will post on my channel why I decided to read this book series. But in lieu of that, go check out that video. Philip Chase was on that video as well and talked a lot about Malaz and kind of allayed some of our fears, answered some of our questions. But we're really excited to be able to read this series together, and I hope that some of you might be reading with us as well. All right, the fun part of a tag is I get to tag some people to do this, um, the Count With Me book tag. So let's start. Let me tag Theo at Rekindled Reader. If you don't know Theo's channel, you should. He's awesome, and he's one of the runners of the Grimoire Discord that I'm probably on the most out of all the discords. And he's been a, a viewer of this channel forever. And now he's got a great channel and he's just, he's awesome. So go check out Theo's channel. Hope Theo will do this um, tag as well. How about, uh, let me do uh, books with Bengus Khan. I really enjoy his stuff too. Just recently discovered his channel and uh, I think he'd probably have fun with this tag. And then how about, I just watched Bryce do a book haul. So Bryce at Shelf Centered. I want to tag Bryce for this video as well. But if you're a booktuber and you do these videos and you like this tag and you want to do it, just do it. Consider yourself tagged. Tag me on the video. I'd love to see what you talk about on this book tag as well. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Also, find me on Twitter and Goodreads for more content. I'd love to interact with you there. 
As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.